I'd like to welcome you from Stanford University. Um, we have been working very hard on uh, understanding MECFS. Uh, we recently had a big working group where people presented a lot of their data. There's, there is a lot of new progress. Uh, it's a complicated disease. This, this is going to take some major effort. Uh, I was really thrilled with the work that was reported here uh, from Norway. And Norway is doing a great job in their researchers. You should be proud of them. Uh, one of the things that we have recently discovered is that it appears that every patient has a mutation in a particular gene, and that gene is called IDO2. Now, the, why that's significant is that it says this is something that's necessary for you to have the disease. That way we can say, okay, what does this gene do and how does that cause or contribute to the disease? And that turns out not to be very easy to figure out because most of the biochemists and the geneticists feel that IDO2 is not necessary. Many people have mutations. And so it's the view that it doesn't have a function. But that's clearly not true. Because why does every patient have a mutation? So that's one of our struggles that we're having. And we have come up with a hypothesis about how that happens. And I'm not going to go into detail about that hypothesis, but other than giving it a name, it's called the metabolic trap hypothesis. And it is a little complicated genetically and biochemically. No need to talk about this until we figure out whether it's right or not. What we have to do is try to disprove it. So the theory will tell you that there will be certain things happen in the body, and then we test to see if, it's, if that is true. And we have to keep doing that until we feel we've exhausted all the possibilities, and therefore it must be true. So the way science works is you come up with an idea and then you try to prove yourself wrong. And you have to be very honest about that. You really have to try to prove yourself wrong. And that's what's wrong with some of the research that's happening where they try to prove that they're right, which you can't actually do. So um, if this is the case, I think we can come up with a strategy that not only will make you feel better, it will cure you. And that's our major goal. Now. That said, we would also like to find things that we can make patients feel better. So there's other pathways that we're looking at in the body. These are biochemical pathways, and many of them are very fundamental, and we are finding problems with them. And what we need to do is to figure out how we can modify those pathways. In some cases, it's something that seems to be missing. How do we get that back into the body? We found one compound that is made in the gut. And it appears that the bacteria in the gut is missing in the patients. And that uh, product uh, is used to protect the brain. And it could, in fact, be causing some of the neurological effects. Patients are not crazy. They simply have some biochemical problems that maybe be able to be fixed. And uh, finding treatments for this disease is an also a major goal. They will probably be much easier than curing the disease, but we have to work on both of them. So some of the problems in trying to find a compound that is missing and then supplement it is that it becomes effectively a drug and therefore it has to get all of the government approvals before people can use it. However, you recognize that if people, healthy people have it, it can't be very harmful and shouldn't be that difficult to get it approved. So those are our, those are our efforts. But what we also want to do is try to make this an international cooperation. I'm not going to call it a collaboration because that triggers all sorts of conflicts of interest. And um, we don't have to want to worry about that. We want to simply work together and we want to help each other. So if we are doing some things here that can help another investigator, we are all in favor of doing it. 
and and I and that's what our uh, what we call working group is all about getting a group of scientists uh, that are really dedicated to solving this problem but are not just saying I want to solve it myself and I don't want anybody else to solve it but the disease has to be solved and everybody will do their best and we can have different people with different expertise and talents working on this and I think that's the best way for, to us to make progress so I'm optimistic I'm really optimistic that we'll get somewhere much faster than a lot of other diseases because of the, we're doing this in a very different way. For example, when we collect data, we have a website for researchers. This is not for patients because I don't want patients to misinterpret our data, but we have a website that all of our data goes onto. And any researcher anywhere in the world can get access to this data and study it. And that's also been happening uh, at, at our recent meeting. Several of the professors that were very good at data analysis and physiology are using our data and coming up with ideas. And they didn't have to do any of the experiments and didn't have any of the expense to collecting the data. This is fantastic. This is exactly what we want. And this will make progress much faster. The other problem you have in doing research is sometimes it takes longer to get the work published than it does to do the work. And that sometimes is, is uh, because there are things maybe missing or controls or people just don't like the work. And so by just putting up the data that we're sure is correct, uh, it can speed things up tremendously. This was what happened in the, in the genome project. We decided that we should be putting up all of our sequencing data and in that case, we put it up with within 24 hours after collecting the data. Usually is before we even had a chance to look at it. And that sped up a lot of the work uh, in the genome project. So that's what we're trying to do, come up with ideas that will speed up uh, all the research. We're also very excited here at Stanford because the Stanford Medical Center has decided to redo their MECFS clinic and make it a multidisciplinary clinic. So having all different medical doctors of different expertise to help the patients and integrate it with the research. So we'll be a major part of that clinic. And although it's not really totally established yet, we are already starting out doing collaborations with the clinic and trying out some new approaches. And, and there's a lot of effort now to getting people together to share their uh, understanding of the disease and doctors of what they have tried to do that seem to help and get those out there because some of this stuff is not something you can easily publish and the doctors are too busy anyway to treating patients. So uh, a, a big effort now to uh, look at what people have tried, what seems to work and what kind of test you can make to see whether it will work and, and get that out as a potential treatment. And we'll just keep sort of hacking away at this disease until we make people better. So uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you are getting some optimism from this because it, you, you should. This is not the problems of the past where people didn't have very bad ideas about what caused this disease that were absolutely wrong. Thank you very much. <laughs>